Used for centuries to drill holes for pegs and bolts, augers have played a bit role in history and were critical to the construction of everything from tall ships to manor homes. Traditionally rotated by hand, today's power drills give the auger bit a more modern twist. Attached to a power drill, an auger bit can chew through wood in seconds to produce perfect screw holes. It spits out shavings through the corkscrew-shaped pathway, preventing it from clogging the freshly drilled holes. Operated manually or by drill, the auger bit is an efficient gizmo responsible for a lot of projects coming together. An auger bit starts as a solid steel rod. They heat it to a blistering 900 degrees Celsius. When the rod is white hot, it's supple enough to be shaped. He moves one end of the hot steel rod under a long pulsating hammer. The anvils below allow the energy of the hammer to be transferred to the rod and flatten it. He angles the flattened end sideways to shape the edges. He then tweaks the profile a bit more by moving the rod from anvil to anvil. The anvils are set at various heights for impacts of different force. When he's done, the once circular steel rod looks like a long putty knife, but this is just temporary. Next, it's back into that super hot furnace to reheat the forged end to a malleable state once again. He clamps the white hot rod in a machine that twists the flattened end to a specific configuration. In this hot and supple state, the steel is as easy to twist as a piece of stiff ribbon. As the steel cools, it becomes more rigid, so it's back into the furnace to make it pliable once again. He places it between the jaws of a toothed vise. He closes the jaws repeatedly as he pulls the auger along. This crimps the auger spirals to a precise configuration. Each spiral ends up exactly the same. It's a critical step. Without it, the auger wouldn't operate smoothly and could even get stuck as it drills through wood. Now he slams a drop hammer onto the tip of the auger repeatedly, forcing it into a die. As the hot steel fills the die cavity, it takes its shape giving it the rudimentary profile of the drilling head. It's now tapered like a cone, but there's a lot of surplus material surrounding it. This surplus steel is a bit of spillover. He trims off that hardened spillover with a clip press, and this further defines the drilling head. He presses the auger tip against a ridged grinding wheel to carve a screw thread into it. The screw thread will give the auger bit extra bite as it drills through wood. The focus now turns to the other end of the auger, the shank. As it spins in a lathe, cutting tools slim the shank and shorten it to precise specifications. Now they toughen up the steel by first heating it and then dipping it in cool oil. The shock caused by the abrupt temperature change makes the steel harder. Then the auger spins between two wheels. One wheel rolls it, the other grinds the outer diameter of the twists to specification. A worker grinds the valleys in the auger twists by hand in order to reach every spot. This smooths the surface so wood shavings will flow upward as the auger bores deep into the wood. He changes the belt to a finer abrasive and preps it with a small stone. He spins the belt and polishes the auger until it shines. And the result is a glossy sheen. It looks good and will further smooth the way for the extraction of wood shavings through the twists. Now with a different and much smaller grinder, he carves wings and sharp edges below the auger's cutting head. From a simple steel cylinder to a useful wood drilling bit, this has truly been a story with many twists and turns. With the work at the factory now done, these augers are ready for any job. They come in a range of diameters and lengths for tasks of any size. With so many options, all those projects should come together bit by bit.